Santi Okimao Pisim Nitisi Mikason. Welcome. Uh, my name is Director DeWolf. Thank you for being here. Uh, I was welcoming you in my traditional Cree language. And I am now calling the June 10th, 2020 regular board meeting to order at 1 p.m. We live and go to school in a city that is the ancestral homeland to the Duwamish people, the Muckleshoot Nation, and the Suquamish Nation. We acknowledge them as custodians of this land since time immemorial. As guests, and in many of our cases, as settlers on this land, we extend our deepest gratitude and respect to their ancestors and elders, past, present, and future. Ms. Wilson-Jones, roll call, please. Director Hampson. Hampson. Um, Director Hampson. Apologies, I'm here. I just couldn't get back to the screen. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Director Harris. Present. Director Hersey. Here. Director Mack. Here. Director Rankin. Here. Director Rivera-Smith. Uh, this is Greg Narver. I just spoke with Director Rivera-Smith. She's likely to be a, a couple minutes late for this meeting. She's tending to something else. Thank you. Director DeWolf. Present. Okay. Superintendent Juneau is also joining us for today's meeting and additional staff will be briefing the board as we move through today's agenda. This meeting is being held remotely per the governor's proclamation 28.4, prohibiting meetings such as this one from being held in person. And I'll note that members of the public may also be joining via video, excuse me, via phone or online streaming. I will not be asking members of the public to identify themselves today, but thank you to those joining us. As stated on the agenda, there will not be a public comment opportunity today for the board's March 11, 2020 vote to waive relevant provisions of board policy 1430 and board procedure 1430BP, as well as board resolution 2019-20-29. By email to the board, by fax, and by mail, as stated on the agenda. And directors uh, were sent a uh, an email with those comments uh, from Ms. Loffelman. To, to facilitate today's meeting, I will ask all participants to ensure you are muted when you're not speaking. Staff may be muting participants to address feedback and ensure we can hear um, directors and staff. Um, now we are going to do a little bit of uh, interesting choreography. Uh, we are going to move into exec executive session. So folks that logged on to this specific team's call, I'm going to ask you to hang up this call and move over to our executive session team's call. Uh, and here we go. The board is now immediately recessing the regular board meeting into executive
Director Mack. Director Mack, Director Harris. Present. And I think we're waiting for Director Rivera Smith. Okay. And Director Vera Smith is here and Director Rankin. She's logging in over here. Okay, we'll let Director Rankin uh, pop over momentarily. Uh, I will now turn it over to Superintendent Juneau for her comments. Uh, thank you, President DeWolf. I'm actually going to waive comments today and uh, um, for the sake of time. Thank you, to Superintendent Juneau. Uh, apologies about that. Uh, we are now reached, we have now reached the consent portion of today's agenda. May I have a motion for the consent agenda, please? Director Harris, is your Apologies, address you made uh, Approval of the consent agenda. This is Director Hampson. Second, Director Thank Harris. You. Thank you, Director Hampson for moving and Director Harris for seconding. Do directors have any items they would like to remove from the consent agenda? I have a point of clarification for Chief Counsel Narber, please. Okay. May I abstain from approving the consent agenda? Yes. This is Director Harris. Yes, Thank you can get the on record as, as abstaining, correct? And that will come okay. in the next portion when we vote. Thank you. So uh, if there are no items that directors want to move off of the consent agenda and approve of the consent agenda, please signify now by saying aye. 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 Director Harris abstain. I haven't gotten there yet. One moment. For those directors who abstain. Director Harris abstain. And any no's. Thank you. This motion passes. Thank you, directors. We are now a little bit behind time, but we will move to the action item on today's agenda. As we move through these items and later the introduction items, I will first call on committee chairs, and then I'll call on the remaining directors alphabetically for questions and comments. So now we are to action item number one. This is resolution 2019-20-28, affirming inclusion of our LGBTQ student staff and community. May I have a motion for this item, please? I move that the school board approve resolution 2019-20-28, affirming inclusion of LGBTQIA plus students, staff, and community in Seattle Public Schools. May I have a second? Second. Second the motion. Thank you, directors. This has item has been moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. We will now move to directors for any comments or questions before we vote. And I will start with myself. That feels weird uh, as the sponsor of this resolution. Uh, so I just wanted to give a little quick background and then jump into questions and comments from directors. Uh, I have been working on this with uh, students and community uh, since probably last end of last fall. Um, brought this forward for collaboration with the district with um, directors Mack and directors Rankin on some policy conversations as Chief Podesta, Chief DeBacker, and uh, legal counsel Ron Boy, as, a, as well as Lisa Love, who is our um, health uh, program manager. And I, um, I really appreciated being able to work with them and create this resolution. Um, um, first, uh, doing an assessment of buildings that have space available for uh, gender neutral restrooms, uh, as well as requiring all new construction to include at minimum one multi-stall gender neutral restroom. In addition, there is a portion about uh, the adoption of instructional materials must explicitly include LGBTQ folks, significant events, contributions, as well as uh, kickstarting and initiating a process for um, looking at an LGBTQ studies high school course uh, and happy to answer any other questions. One thing I did want to add is I would like to propose an amendment, Greg, and I'm not sure if this is the correct moment to do it, but it's 
It's just a small amendment on um, some of the wording. I got feedback from community. Would this be the time to do it? Okay, maybe Craig jumped off. Well, I would like to propose an amendment that uh, all references to LGBTQIA plus in the resolution be changed to LGBTQIA plus parentheses, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, ally, and parentheses to make sure that uh, our community and folks uh, understand what that acronym means. I would amend my motion. I think you can just second that, uh, Chandra, and then we can. Okay, I'll second that amendment. amendment. Does anybody have any comments or concerns about that? No, I think that's a great suggestion. Just thank, to thank not assume that everybody understands what that is is, is probably wise. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. Okay, so all those uh, in favor of the amendment, signify oh. by saying aye. Director DeWolf, um, I can call roll on that. I believe we oh, would do sure. this by roll call. Thank you. That would be great. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to jump in. No, that's uh, great. Um, Thank you. Uh, so, Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Uh, Director Rankin. Aye. Director Rivera Smith. Aye. Director Hampson. Aye. Harris? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. The motion um, with the amendment has passed unanimous, unanimously. Okay. Thank you. So we've just voted on the amendment. Now the the, the first motion is, is back in our conversation. So um, the only other thing I want to say is I'm really excited. Uh, I heard from um, students uh, and also collaborated with the NAACP Youth Council on this resolution and I'm so grateful that we're, I was able to connect with them and really get their feedback about this. So I'm really excited to uh, you know, obviously share this. You know, hopefully we can pass this today and share this great news, uh, particularly during Pride Month. I did not expect us to wait this long to, to talk about this. I thought we'd be talking about it in March. So it's, uh, it's beautifully poetic, I guess, that it uh, it's happening here in Pride Month. So I'm going to turn it over to directors for any comments, questions, or concerns before we move to the roll call vote, starting with Director Hampson. No questions uh, from me. Uh, just a, a gratitude for the, the work that, that went into this and for uh, support of our LGBTQIA plus students, staff, and community. Thank you, Director Hampson. Director Harris. First of all, first of all nice work, President DeWolf, and nice work by staff. And do we have the um, gay pride and transgender flags on our flagpole yet? And if not, can we go down and roll them up? I'm happy to report they were rolled up, uh, raised up on June 1st. Uh, yes. Obviously, we're in the, in the midst of our pandemic. We couldn't go celebrate, but that is that is currently up, yes. In any event, thank you ever so much. I appreciate you. Thanks, Director Harris. Uh, Director Hersey. Um, go ahead, Greg. I'm sorry, I was having an offline conversation station for a minute and I'm informed there was a question for me. I'm sorry to have been away for a second. Uh, we have was we we resolved it and uh, Ellie uh, jumped in for support. So I appreciate you. I, I apologize for being absent for a minute. No worries. You're, you're busy. Uh, Director Hersey. Uh, no questions. Thank you, Director Hersey. Director Mack. Uh, I'm very excited about this resolution and making the statement. Um, and grateful for the work and moving it forward. Uh, and, uh, you know, look forward to the operation side of the, the work as well. Yes, thank you so much, Director uh, Mack. You've been really great to work with. I appreciate your support. And I think we'll actually be talking about one of the policies that we implicate in this resolution 6900 today, or at least on the 24th. So looking forward to that. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Director Rankin. Yeah, I um, am also you know, in in agreement with comments before, and I read part of an email from a parent uh, yesterday in um, Curriculum Instruction Committee, and I would like to just restate um, something that uh, that this parent said. Um, in this time of injustice and pain and violence, the steps being taken by the board and the superintendent to make our schools more decent, more fair, more inclusive, more just, more safe, more affirming, are a beacon of light and hope and promise. 
as a parent of a transgender child who gets to thrive, who gets to love, who gets to be, and is celebrated because of these efforts, my heart is so full. And my heart is even more full to know that every child who will follow will have paths, supports, resources, tools, and safe toilets to make it all easier. And they also um, specially noted uh, a thank you to Lisa Love for her work in staying alongside families and for working so hard and continuing to, to move us in this direction. So I just wanted to have that be on the public record about um, the you know resolutions can seem so like procedural and dry, but um, how much of an impact it makes and how uh, everything that we do is guided by these these policies and resolutions. And um, I just wanted to thank everybody for their work on this and just read that into the record for us all to take a moment and uh, recognize the impact that um, this really has. Thank you, Director Rinkin. Wow, I, that's really great to hear um, that, that note. Thank you. Uh, Director Devetta Smith. No questions, full support and full appreciation for the work that's gone into this. I'm so happy that our students are going to benefit all students, not just ones um, this refers to, but all students are going to benefit from it. So thank you. Thanks, Director Verson. And I'll just uh, finish by saying uh, I, I'm really excited. Hopefully we'll pass this today and to be able to let the uh, MENI students know and NAACP students know that helped work on this, that their support and their input and their voice and their perspective are part of this resolution. So it's just as much theirs as the districts and so I appreciate um, them and I'm excited to be able to share the news. So with that, uh, I would love to kick us off into roll call and hopefully be able to celebrate some really good news uh, during Pride Month. So Ms. Wilson-Jones, I'll kick it over to you. Um, and can I just get a clarification from Greg on an amendment passed, do we need a new motion on the underlying resolution as amended? Yes, there should be a, correct, there should be a motion to approve the resolution as amended. Oh, you're right, thank you. I move, um, go ahead, go ahead, oh, I move the uh, to approve the resolution as amended. Second. Thank you. Uh, moved by Director Hampson, seconded by Director Harris. Uh, uh, I will uh, let Miss Wilson Jones take the roll call from here. Director Mack. Aye. Director Rankin. Aye, and with gratitude. Director Rivera-Smith? Aye. Director Hampson? Aye. Director Harris? Emphatically aye. Director Hersey? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye, aye, aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you all. Okay. We will now move to action item number two, approval of the operations data dashboard. This came through executive committee on uh, March 20th for consideration. May I have a motion for this item, please? Director Hampson, maybe. Yes, I'm sorry, I forgot to press the mute button. I move to, I move the school board approve the operations data dashboard is attached to the board action report. Second the motion. This item has been moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. This item has also been updated since introduction. Senior advisor to the superintendent, Sherry Cox, could you please provide us on that update quickly? Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Director DeWolf. Uh, very quickly, it's the addition um, and or change to the bar is on page four. And excuse me while my computer is um, temporarily frozen. Uh, it's on page four of the bar and the language added um, reflects uh, some of the director's requests that while a limited number of key measures were selected for the operations data dashboard, each division monitors multiple key performance indicators to guide its work. Divisions, additional measures uh, will be discussed at oversight work sessions and if applicable during future superintendent evaluation. And that was the only um, change to the bar itself. Um, I do have some information uh, regarding um, the questions that Director Hampson and Directors uh, Rankin asked regarding um, 
how did each of these move the needle in student outcome data? Uh, and I'm happy to address that, or I'm also happy to put that in a Friday memo if it's more applicable. Um, <clears throat> I will uh, go through directors, and Director Hampson and Rankin can let you know as we move through them. So let me start uh, with uh, directors for comments and questions before we move to that vote. And uh, as executive committee chair, I will um, start this out, but I appreciate the update. Thank you very much. And I will um, pass it on to Director Hampson. Uh, yes, and if you could, um, I'll make that be my question um, um, and let you uh, provide those updates. Sure. And and so in, I don't have an update on uh, Director Hampson for each of the performance indicators, but I do have for uh, three different indicators um, based on what the research team was able to gather in the short turnaround time. And um, uh, in uh, John Hadley's book, Visible Learning, um, he does note that for uh, regarding the teacher on the first day of class, um, as I, I think all of us are very well aware that the teacher-student relationship and the overall quality of the teacher are two indicators uh, very high, uh, highly tied to student performance data. And so we believe that by having that classroom teacher in the classroom on the first day, it kicks off to um, start that teacher student relationship, hopefully on a positive foot. And also, while our subs are high quality, we know that the um, uh, the teacher quality is higher when we have somebody that um, is going to remain in that classroom. Um, regarding the school bus and on-time performance, uh, research has shown that students who start the school day on time do better than students who are late to school. Additionally, late students disrupt the learning of other students in the class and students who have more classmates who are more often do worse in school than students whose classmates are more often on time. And that's from a study uh, by Godfrey in 2014. And then another study from 2017 by the same researcher says that studies have shown that students who take the bus to school are less likely to be absent than students who use other forms of transportation to get to school. So that um, is directly tied then to that on-time school bus performance. And then the school lunch performance, um, there's evidence that school lunches are more nutritious than home-packed lunches for students, according to a 2016 and a 2014 study and that school food policies can improve student diets. Um, that's from a 2018 study. And then recent research has also shown that school lunch participation improves academic outcomes for students. And that is from a 2020 study. And I'm happy to um, drop the studies uh, into a Friday memo so you can all refer back should you be interested in reading more about those. And those are the, th um, the three uh, director Hampson that we could find in that in the short time given to us. Um, well, other than be being uh, offended as somebody who prepares um, <laughs> lunch, um, I would just say that I think um, as a note for when we uh, do report this, uh, the KPI around uh, the teacher in the classroom the first day of school, um, that we want to make sure that uh, we look at the impact of that same teacher not being there on the first day of school uh, in uh, November when we have historically had shifts. Um, so just a, a note that um, I think that does assume that that you have the first the teachers there and then they stay there, um, which is something that we continue to be challenged with in this district that I know everyone's committed to. But I'll, I'll um, rest at that. Thank you. Thank you, Director Hampson, Director Harris. Uh, this is one of those places I want to go on record with respect to the operational goal, the operations goal of buses on time, given the missing West Seattle Bridge and the traffic cluster on Highway 99, the First Avenue Bridge, the traffic impact to South Park and Georgetown, and the fact that our main bus barn is south of First Avenue Bridge. I spent 30 minutes in a three mile long backup this morning at 10 o'clock and it's only going to get worse when the COVID-19 issues face. This is going to be a horrific issue for us to have buses 
on time. Other than that, I intend to vote in favor of these goals. Thank you. Thank you, Director Harris. Next is Director Hersey. No questions at this time. Excited to move forward. Thank you, Director Mack. Yes, my thank you. Difficulty with my technology there. Um, I uh, appreciate the uh, development of this new tool and the, the data that's being used. I uh, recall, and maybe it didn't make it into the record or maybe it didn't get uh, understood as a request, um, but I thought I had asked to have the information about what the current data dashboard is and what those uh, um, data pieces, whether or not they continue forward in this or what's changed. And I didn't see that attached to this bar. Um, knowing that, you know, there's a lot going on and that might have just gotten missed in conversation. I'd like to request that uh, either in a Friday memo or perhaps at an ops committee meeting that we actually have the conversation about here's the prior operation data dashboard and the data that we were tracking. Um, here's the new one and here's kind of the cross mapping of what information um, is going to be tracked where or what information isn't going to be tracked any, any longer. I just like to know what we're missing from the prior data dashboard um, that we won't have the continuity um, going forward. Um, so is it possible Director to Mac, request that? Um, uh, Director Mack, thank you for that. I did include the previous data dash operations data dashboard in last week's Friday memo. Um, and so I'm happy uh, uh, to have further conversations about it, but it was included in last week's Friday memo. Okay, I missed that that, that came out. Um, I think that um, I, I, maybe I just want to ping it for the next conversation around when the data dashboard is presented to us. Um, that before that happens to get even kind of a crosswalk of um, maybe the data that's missing. I need to take a look at that, but I just want to ping it for a future conversation. So thank you. I'll look back at the uh, Friday memo and review that um, and then have further conversation of where we can uh, tie that into our, our conversations. Um, thank, thank you. Thanks, Director Mack. Director Rankin. Uh, uh, I appreciate the connection to those studies, um, uh, Sherry. That's that's super helpful to hear, and, uh, and I would like to see those attached to in the in a Friday memo and any others that connect to the other data. I think it's really helpful to kind of tell um, tell the full story about why we're why we're paying attention to what we're paying attention to. So I really appreciate that. Thank, thank you, Director Rankin. And I think, Sherry, if I could just add to that uh, quickly while it's here, is that I wonder if um, where the public facing dashboard is, if maybe that information just lives with the data dashboard wherever it's at on our website with some of those um, supporting documents. That would be great. Uh, Director, Director, Director DeWolf, I want to make sure I understand what you're asking. So along with um, this, the new operations data dashboard, you'd like the research to be uh, an, an opportunity for folks to see the research behind this? Sure, no. right. that'd be really helpful, yes. Okay, thank you, Director Rivera Smith. No questions, thank you. Thank you, okay. Uh, seeing no further questions or comments, Ms. Wilson-Jones, uh, roll call vote, please. Um, Director Rankin? Aye. Director Rivera-Smith? Aye. Director Hampson? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. Director Hersey? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director DeWolf? Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move to action item number three, Satterberg Foundation. Elementary feeder school grant. May I have a motion for this item? This came, sir, excuse me, this came through audit and finance on May 18th for approval. May I have a motion for this item? This is uh, Director Hampson. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to accept the Satterberg Foundation Elementary Feeder School Grant 
grant funds in the amount of 950,000. Second the motion. Thank you, directors. Uh, this was moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. We'll now move to directors for any comments or questions for Chief Financial Officer Jillian Berge before we vote. And I will start with Director Hampson, who is our Audit Finance Committee Chair. Uh, we had the opportunity to discuss this at length in both committee and um, in at the uh, uh, former school board uh, meeting. And um, so with that, I have no further comments or, or questions, but I'm grateful for uh, the funds to continue this work. Thank you. Director Harris. Second, with enormous thanks to the foundation. And I'm sorry we can't thank them in person. Thanks, Director Harris. Director Hersey. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Director Mack. Might be on you. Uh, yeah, I do. I just, uh, I'm curious to know whether or not, I know this, I, I'm supportive and excited, but I'm wondering whether or not any thought has gone into how this, uh, these grant funds might be spent differently given the planning for the fall. Um, are there ongoing conversations with organizations such as this one um, about potentially shifting how those um, funds would be spent given potential different options for how we reopen schools? Chief Birdie, quickly. Uh, not at this time. Okay, any other questions, Director Mike? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Director Rinkin. No questions. Just thank you to the foundation for your support. Thank you. Director Devetta Smith. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I have no questions. And just sincere and utmost gratitude to the Satterberg Foundation for your support. Ms. Wilson Jones, uh, roll call, please. Director Rivera Smith. Aye. Director Hampson. Aye. Director Harris. Aye. Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director Rankin. Aye. Director DeWolf. Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you, directors. We're moving quickly through it. We got a lot more to go. We'll see new, uh, action number four, which is approval of contracts for specially designed instruction, tutoring services, and other compensatory education services, RFQ 02758. This came through the Audit Finance Committee on May 18th for consideration. May I have a motion for this item? I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute contracts with the following agencies under RFQ 02758, specially designed instruction, Yellowwood Academy in the amount of $649,500, Maxim Healthcare Services in the amount of $950,000, Brightmont Academy in the amount of $265,000, and Brock's Academy in the amount of $250,000, and to take any necessary actions to implement these contracts. Second the motion. Thank you. This item has been moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. We'll now move to directors for any comments or questions for Chief of Student Support Services, Dr. Consi Pedrosa, before we vote. So I will start with our Audit and Finance Committee Chairperson, Director Hampson. Uh, 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 similarly, we had uh, the opportunity to have good discussions about uh, our annual uh, contracting for these services that we're not able to provide uh, and grateful that we have community organizations that are able to. Um, and with that, I have no uh, further comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you, Director Harris. Uh, only a comment that I look forward to the day that Seattle Public Schools is appropriately funded for special education services and we can deliver our own and or with a consortium of other Washington State school districts so that uh, we can keep families together that have very significant special needs. Thank you. Pat. Thank you. Director Hersey. No, no questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Mack. 
Uh, no questions or comments. Thank you, Director Rankin. Uh, just to concur with Director Harris, that I think it would be uh, uh, beneficial for all of our students to serve our students within our communities and, and allow kids to go to school together. Thank you, Director Devetta Smith. No questions, thank you. Thank you all. Okay, I have no questions uh, at this time as well. Ms. Wilson-Jones, roll call. Director Hampson. Aye. Director Harris. Aye. Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director Rankin. Aye. Director Rivera-Smith. Aye. Director DeWolf. Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you all. We will now move to action item number five, review and approval of 2020 Career and Technical Education Annual Plan for Board Policy Number 2170. This came through the Curriculum and Instruction Policy Committee on May 19th for approval. We have a motion for this item, please. I move that the board approve the 2020 Career and Technical Education Annual Plan as attached to this board action report. Second the motion. Thank you. This item has been moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. This item has been updated since instruction. So Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Dan DeBacker, could you please brief us uh, on the update? Yes, uh, thank you, President DeWolf. The update was made to the edit in the chart where we had some duplicate numbers. Uh, Director Rivera-Smith pointed that out during introduction. Thank you. Uh, okay, so now to directors for any questions comments or questions before we move to the vote. Uh, let's start with our cur excuse me, curriculum and instruction policy committee chair, Director Rankin. Uh, no, I don't have anything further to add than has been discussed already. Um, again, just want to reiterate the great work and, and um, heart and enthusiasm behind uh, the presentation of this to our committee and uh, that I assume carries out to their daily work. So thank you. Thank you, Director Rankin. Next up is Director Hampson. No questions from me, thank you. Director Harris. Uh, just the comment, A, extraordinarily grateful and what a long, long way we've come in the last five years. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Director Hersey. No questions, thank you. Thank you, Director Mack. Um, yeah, uh, just a, a Quick comment that I, you know, the report and the plan are very, very thorough. And from my understanding in committee discussion, um, that uh, some of the future planning around Rainier Beach um, is being made with uh, capital planning as well. And so I just, I just want to uh, give a shout out to the cross collaboration and future planning around um, CTE that this report represents and. Um, add my support and continued support for it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Mack. Director Devetta Smith. Hey, uh, don't don't hate me. So that column of the uh, redundant paragraph, redundant bullet points, the first one is still redundant. The very first one in the uh, second column of page 18, integrate all courses with rigorous content aligned to academic learning standards and CT program standards. It's fully fifth bullet down again. So, um, Anyways, that one's still hanging on. <laughs> um, I this is this is Diane. I do see that, and we can make that correction. All right, yeah, I'm a, no huge, but <laughs> sorry, no question. Nope, well, that, that's great, Direct uh, Chief Narver. Do we need to adjust anything in our motion for that, or does that? Uh, um, to make those those corrections, you mean? I think it would be just to strike. The redundant paragraph does that sound correct director yeah i think you offer a new motion to approve it as as with that amendment okay so director bear smith would you like to move that yeah i'll motion um well if no one else has questions i guess i'll last one aren't i no one um motion to approve as amended okay okay uh miss wilson jones i think i will i don't have any questions uh as as well, so Ms. Wilson Jones, I think I'll take it to you. One moment, just um, adding the new motion into our voting sheet. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Director Rankin. Aye. Director Hampson. Aye. Director Harris. Aye. Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Apologies for going out of order. Director Rivera Smith. Aye. And Director DeWolf. Aye. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so uh, up next is item number six. And uh, Chief Counsel Narver, I have a question here. Um, I was asked by staff if they might combine the conversations for items six through 11. Um, as we have done similarly in the past, although I know it was done in introduction. So do you have a comment on how we might proceed to? Um, I, I do. Uh, I believe there were two of these items that have been changed since introduction. And so Chief Podesta should address uh, those separately. And already introduced there's nothing he nothing more he needs to say about them other than to be prepared to answer uh questions about any of those items of course they have to be voted on separately but uh, they can be presented together as long as he speaks to two that have been changed since introduction awesome thank you okay so we will now move on to action item number six and fred i'll let you take the, the, the control in a moment but this is bex for approval of budget transfer and award contract p5132 Bid number B012042 to CDK Construction Services Inc. for the Whitman Middle School Seismic Improvements Project. Um, my one curiosity, Greg, is do I let uh, Fred jump in now to describe as the as the, the bulk of the six through eleven, or do I? What's your suggestion? Uh, I'm sorry. In, in terms of how they are presented to the board, Should I just let Fred jump in here and yes, however them? he wants to do it, he can note that there is a number six there were no changes and unless there are questions he intends to move ahead to i believe number seven did have has been yes, changed since the production great thank you uh chief operations officer fred podesta um i'll address the uh items uh seven and eleven that had changes and then open it up for questions for um any of the six um uh, contract bars these are all capital construction projects that went to committee um, before the procurement process was finalized, which is why um, uh, these ended up for consideration. Uh, uh, action item seven um, relates to athletic uh, lighting at uh, Whitman Middle School. And there was some language that was inaccurate in the bars introduced describing um, a couple of community meetings um, that had been copied from a, a, another lighting bar because there's so many of these um, done and that was inappropriate as those um, meetings were not held and so that was struck from the from the board action report uh, item 11 uh, relates um, uh, to uh, uh, an addition to west woodland elementary school and the added language um, just reflected that the operations committee um, got a design presentation from the project architects on March 2nd. Okay, so I'm going to move through items 6 through 11. We, um, I'll read them, we'll do all of our motions and seconds, and um, we'll uh, go from there. Okay, so we'll now move to introduction, excuse me, action item number 6, BEX 4, approval of budget transfer and award contract P5132, bid number B0. 12042 to CDK Construction Services Inc. for the Whitman Middle School Seismic Improvements Project. This came to the Operations Committee on April 27th for consideration. They have a motion for this item. I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to one, implement a budget transfer in the, in the amount of $53,871 from BEX4 program contingency to Whitman Middle School Seismic Improvement Project and two, execute construction contract P5132 with CDK Construction Services Inc. in the amount of $1,560,000 plus Washington State sales tax with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement the contract. Second the motion. 
Thank you. This has been moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. So I'll start with our Operations Committee Chair, Director Mack, and we'll move through directors until the roll call vote. So Director Mack. Uh, yes, first I just want to say I appreciate being able to bundle these together. Um, I, I know how thorough staff is in working through the bars and how we've discussed these at length in ops, um, as well as um, my one, one question, well, two questions. One question ar around ensuring that the, I'm just looking to make sure, there was one school that had a recent uh, design review and that was added to the bar to clarify that that's, that's happened and anyone can refer back to that meeting. Uh, just to ensure that there isn't another one in here that should have that uh, updated as well. Um, West Woodland, was that the one that had the um, update about when the design review was presented? Yes. Okay, I think that's right because I, I, as I'm looking at these, it looks like the rest of them are not the recent design review ones. Um, but the going forward, it's helpful to have that information to to reference back to for the public that's interested in in maybe seeing the overall overarching project. Um, Director, Director Mack, the other projects are much smaller. Right, right. Um, with respect to number eleven, um, the West Woodland Elementary Edition and modernization project um i just i just want to note uh that recently we got public comment about the concern that um 12 classrooms is not enough given the growth in the city um and when i saw that i just i i kind of had to smile that we already know that the work we're continuing to do is not anywhere close to what we need to do um and I just wanted to publicly acknowledge that for the constituent that wrote in with concern about uh, whether or not we have sufficient capacity in our buildings um, and uh, just kind of underscore that we continue with that challenge um, and even more so um, in the current environment. Um, and with that, I don't have any additional questions, uh, just support and gratitude for the massive amount of work that Capital Projects continues to uh, push forward to make buildings safe and uh, welcoming for our students. Thank you, Director Mack. Next up is Director Hampson. No questions for me, thank you. Thank you, Director Hurst, excuse me, Director Harris. No questions for me, thank you. Thank you, Director Hersey. No questions, thank you. Thank you, Director Rankin. No questions from me. Thank you, Director Levetta Smith. No questions, thank you. Thank you, and none for me, Ms. Wilson Jones. So roll call, please. Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director Rankin. Aye. Director Rivera Smith. Uh, aye. Director Hampson. Aye. Director Harris. Aye. Aye. This motion has, oops, yeah, this motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. We'll now move to action item number seven, BEX 5, award contract P5145 for athletic field lighting projects at Whitman Middle School. This came to the operations committee on April 27th for consideration. May I have a motion for this item, please? I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute the following contracts with the King County Directors Association, KCDA, for athletic field lighting project contract P5145 in the amount of $757,256 for Whitman Middle School plus Washington State sales tax with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement the contracts. Second the motion. Thank you, Director Harris. Moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. Uh, I'm just going to move to uh, Director Mack for any final comments or questions, and then I'm just going to open it up generally for questions as, as opposed to going through each, and we'll ask for a roll call. So, uh, Director Mack, any 
comments, questions, concerns? So they, I think you mentioned it in your last comment, but. Um, I, you know, I know that there's been some uh, concern around this uh, specific project um, and field lighting, and I think that we had thorough discussion in ops around those concerns. And um, so nothing to add at this time. Um, thank and uh, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Happy okay. to go ahead and call the vote. Do directors have any questions, comments, concerns? Director Harris has a question for Chief Director Podesta. Director Harris, yes. Uh, Chief Podesta, you've seen the email and the public testimony that's come in uh, regarding the SEPA process from homeowners. Do you have comments in respect to that? Um, I have seen public uh, comments, you know, relating to, um, you know, concerns about lighting at the at the fields as, you know, the district has continued to strive um, to use the most modern technology that, you know, focus um, the light on the field and um, causes as little light pollution um, as possible to the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, the um, action of, you know, keeping the fields, it there probably isn't much of a solution around you know, using the fields later, that's the intent of the lights, which yeah, um, uh, some communities have also responded to, um, you know, given the, the, the demand for athletic fields by both students, um, community use that we also share with um, uh, Seattle Parks and Recreation. I, I don't know that, you know, we have a choice, uh, um, but to keep trying to make as intense a use um, of our facilities as possible to give everyone everyone's access. So we're trying through design mechanisms, you know, to to make um, as little impact as possible on the built environment in the fields. And, you know, we yeah you know, we understand the concerns of the neighborhood and design around those as best as we can. Can you also address the intergovernmental issues with respect to the parks department that they give us access to fields and recess areas and sports where we don't have that? And then yeah. there is a collaboration for the future here because we're not making new property. Um, and that's true. Our, our um, enrollment continues to grow. We are open buildings. We are expanding buildings and taking up you know, more space on our sites. We have not acquired new property um, and the city continues to grow. So we work hand in hand with the parks department to um, uh, try to share all of our, our green spaces as much as possible. And I think um, uh, this has been a, you know, a good deal for the district. We get as good as we give on, on this front. Um, and, you know, we're able to add to instructional space, add classroom space and then leverage these community resources so you know it isn't really the case that um, uh, we're not getting equitable use of um, of fields we you know we opened a comprehensive high school at the start of this school year and are relying on on that relationship with parks to um, provide for athletic fields that 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 school does not have and so that's an important relationship and has been beneficial to the district thank you Chief. Any more questions, Director Harris? No, sir. Thank you. Are there any more questions about item number seven for direct from directors? Quickly, uh, yes. Uh, the last meeting, um, I appreciate you taking out the reference to the meetings that didn't take place, but I understood that I thought Richard had said there were two like separate community meetings, and he would that this was maybe discussed, and he would supply the dates for that. Was that not something that happened, or we have that? Um, Richard is still um, Mr. Bass, our director uh, of. Uh, capital construction and uh, capital projects and planning is still looking through records and is um, our records, but not we cannot pinpoint the dates of those meetings. Um, the staff that staff those meetings have since retired and we're trying to um, unearth the records. So for now, we can't say with absolute certainty what date okay. those okay. meetings were held. So we struck the language from the bar. I okay. think there's still a belief that there were, in fact, some public meetings, but we have not been able to find those records. Understood. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any Thanks. other final questions or comments for Director, excuse me, Chief Podesta before you do roll call? Okay, hearing none, Ms. Wilson Jones, roll call for num item number seven, please. Director Mack. Director Mack. I, yeah, sorry, I. Thank you. Uh, Director Rankin. Hi. Director Rivera Smith. Hi. Director Hampson. Hi. Director Harris. Hi. Director Hersey. Hi. Director DeWolf. Hi. This motion has passed unanimously. Thanks, Ms. Wilson Jones. We will now move to action item number eight, BEX 5, award construction and contract P5140, bid number B032062 to Field Turf USA for the athletic field improvements at Ballard High School project. This came to the operations committee on April 27th for consideration. May I have a motion for this item, please? I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute construction contract P5140 with Field Turf USA in the amount of $663,566, including base bid plus Washington State sales tax, with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent, and to take any necessary actions to implement the contract. Second the motion. Thank you. So now I will open it up to directors generally for comments or questions for Mr. Podesta before we vote. Mr. Uh, Director Mack, I will let you start as our operations committee chair if you have any burning comments. No questions or comments. Thank you. Do other board directors have questions or comments for Mr. Podesta? Yes. Do you miss, uh, do you, excuse me, Director Harris. I uh, just want to reiterate to and, and clarify with Mr. Podesta that this is a cork infill and that this district has not done rubber, tire, cancerous uh, athletic fields for the last four years. Is that correct, sir? Uh, both those are correct. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions for Mr. Besta before we move to the roll call? Okay, hearing none, Ms. Wilson-Jones, roll call vote, please. Director Rankin. Aye. Director Rivera-Smith. Aye. Aye. Director Hampson. Aye. Director Harris. Aye. Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director DeWolf. Aye. Aye. Motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to uh, action item number nine. This is BTA four award construction contract K5120 bid number B032063 to coast to coast turf the athletic field improvements at Nathan Hale High School and Jane Adams Middle School project. This came to the operations committee on April 27th for consideration. May I have a motion for this item, please? I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute construction contract K5120 with Coast to Coast Turf in the amount of $1,786,980, including base bid plus alternates number one and two, plus Washington State sales tax with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent and to take any necessary actions to implement the contract. Second the motion. Thank you. This mo this item has been moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Di Director Harris. We will now move to Director Mack for any uh, burning questions, concerns, comments uh, before uh, the general questions. Anything, Director Mack? Uh, no questions or comments at this time. Again, thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments, concerns yes, from Dr Harris. Director Harris? Uh, and I and I want to reiterate the last question or comment and clarification from Chief Podesta. Four years ago, the Seattle Public School District took the lead in getting rid of carcinogenic causing higher recycled fill athletic fields and other districts throughout the country have taken our lead. Thank you. Thanks, Director Harris. Any other questions? 
questions, comments from directors? Okay, hearing none, Ms. Wilson Jones, uh, roll call for item number nine, please. Director Rivera Smith. Aye. Director Hampson. Aye. Director Harris. Aye. Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director Rankin. Aye. Director Wolf. Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. We will now move to action item number 10, BEX 5, award construction contract P5146, bid number B012039 to Olympic Peninsula Construction, Inc. for the North Beach Elementary School, Sacagawea Elementary School, and Jane Adams Middle School Pavement Repairs Project. This came to the Operations Committee on April 27th for consideration. May I have a motion for this item, please? I move that the school board authorize the superintendent to execute construction contract P5146 with Olympic Peninsula Construction in the amount of $1,007,700, including base bid plus alternate number one plus Washington State sales tax, with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent, and to take any necessary actions to implement the contract. Second the motion. Thank you. This has been moved. This item has been moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. We'll now move to directors for questions and comments or concerns. We'll start with Director Mack as our operations committee chair. No questions or comments at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Director Mack. Uh, so open to all directors. Any comments, questions, or concerns on action item number 10 before the roll call vote? Question from Director Harris. For Director Harris. Chief Podesta, does this also address the um, North Beach Elementary water seepage off of the East um, Hill? I'm sorry, Director Harris, could you repeat that? I didn't quite catch the question. North Beach Elementary has significant issues with water seepage off of the East Hill onto the playground and um, facilities that our many, many portables there are located upon so that there's flooding and you almost need hip waders to get to the portable. Does this also address those water retention issues? My understanding is this does make um, some improvements with surface water management. Um, I'm not uh, I'm sure that it addresses absolutely every issue, but there are some related to this asphalt in particular that it, it does it does improve the situation. I can get um, further information for you if you like. And could you put that in a Friday memo, please, sir? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Director Harris. Great, re great reminder, I do remember about that. Uh, any other qu questions, Director Harris? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Director, Director DeWolf. Director Hampson. Um, just uh, it can go into a Friday memo, um, Chief Podesta. I just um, it hadn't occurred to me before to ask about um, the permeability of the surfaces as it pertains to runoff in general um, and the, the deleterious effects of, of runoff. And so, um, if we if there's anything um, that we have policy wise or procedure wise relative to uh, that decision making. Um, I'd love to be informed about it um, at some point in the near future. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Director Hampson. Any other questions or comments from directors at this time on action item number 10? Okay, hearing none, Ms. Wilson Jones, roll call, please. Director Hampson. Aye. Director Harris. Aye. Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Rankin. Aye. Director Rivera Smith. Aye. Aye. Director DeWolf. Aye. Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next item is item number 11. BEX 5 to stress school grant and K th through 3 class size reduction grant. Award construction contract P5149 for bid number B012049 to Allied Construction Associates, Inc. for the West Woodland Elementary Addition and 
and modernization project. This came to the operations committee on May 14th for consideration. May I have a motion for this item, please. I move that the school board A authorize the superintendent to execute construction contract P5149 with Allied Construction Associates Inc. in the amount of fourteen million five hundred thirty six thousand plus Washington State sales tax with any minor additions, deletions, and modifications deemed necessary by the superintendent, and to take any necessary actions to implement the contract, and B approve a one time fund transfer of one million seven hundred thousand from the Bex five program contingency funds to the West Woodland Elementary Addition and Modernization Project. Second the motion. Thank you. What a mouthful. OK, this has been moved by Director Hampson and seconded by Director Harris. This has been updated since introduction and uh, Mr. Podesta, you did brief us a little bit about that. So I'm going to move it over to directors for any comments, questions or concerns before the vote and start with Director Mack, who is our operations committee chair. Uh, yeah, thank you. I just want to um, uh, appreciate the questions that have come forward uh, from the various directors on all of these items and uh, just reiterate that, that uh, we have robust conversation about these uh, uh, bars as they come through ops and uh, also excellent minutes that are taken um, that I'm not sure anyone has enough time to go through all of that, but it's um, uh, you can find some good information there if you if you uh, want to go back and and research the questions that were asked and and um, how they're answered. Um, excited to uh, move forward on this um, this project. Thank you, Director Mack. I'll open it up to general questions. Not general. Open it up to all directors for any comments, questions, or concerns before Miss Wilson Jones uh, takes us to the vote. Do directors have questions, comments, concerns? Okay, hearing none, Ms. Wilson-Jones, roll call vote, please. Director Harris. Aye. Director Hersey. Aye. Director Mack. Aye. Director Rankin. Aye. Director Rivera-Smith. Aye. Director Hampson. Aye. Director DeWolf. Aye. This motion has passed unanimously. Thank you, directors, for all your patience. We are we are running a little bit behind time, but I think we will be OK. Um, and then we still have our executive session after. So now we'll move to introduction item number one, approval of the 2020-2021 superintendent evaluation documents. This came to the executive committee on May 20th for, for consideration. Uh, as uh, I'll, I'll be happy to give some background here, and then I'll ask um, the superintendent or any of the other folks from executive committee to add comments. Um, so this motion would approve the 2020-2021 superintendent evaluation documents. They are in alignment with state law, board policy, and the 2019 through 2024 strategic plan. These documents were developed in compliance with board policy and procedure number 1630 and 1630BP evaluation of the superintendent. The proposed 2020-2021 evaluation instruments continue the 2019-2020 focus on African American males reading at or above grade level by third grade and adds a broader executive management slash leadership goal with an emphasis on human resources operations. This board action report came to the executive committee after extensive collaboration with executive committee members and the superintendent and her team and it was it came officially on May 20th, 2020 uh, and was moved forward for consideration by this full board. So. Um, and I'm going to let either the soup or other, um, I'll let the superintendent start and then we'll call on the other uh, executive committee members for any other comments and then questions and comments from the remaining directors. So superintendent, you know. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, I'll just be brief. There's been a lot of conversation about this already, but I do want to thank the executive committee for working with me to develop these proposed documents. I thought it was really great conversation. Um, I'm also really proud out of the work this last year around the third grade reading goal, NCS Excellence, our strategic plan. And you've heard a lot about that as well. Um, and I'm pleased that that will, work will continue and will continue to be the focus of the evaluation because as we know, it is a multi-year uh, process to make sure that we are doing everything we can to make sure students are reading at third grade. I do support the focus on HR operations within the second goal of effective management. It 
we all know that it's very important work and, and including it in my evaluation will give me an opportunity to highlight our progress throughout the year and as you all know I will need your support on these hard decisions that come forward as well. Um, I know that we'll continue to have robust conversations about these goals throughout the next year but just really appreciate the collaborative approach to it. Thank you Superintendent Juneau. Um, I'll just work down the list alphabetically because the next two speakers are from the executive committee and then we'll move to the full board. So Director Hampson any questions comments or anything you'd like to elevate at this time? Uh, I'd like to pass for now and hear from other directors. Thank you. Director Harris. A uh, couple of things. One, I really uh, Director Hampson's collaboration and assistance on the overarching management goal, if you will, because it's not just about the rubric for third grade reading or the operation dashboard for an over $1 billion budget a year. And, um, Please, for a couple of other reasons. One, we added the word dyslexia, and certainly the um, the issue that we have many, many of our children suffering from dyslexia, including over-identified black and brown children, and uh, getting busy on strategies to work with that. Also, very pleased that the executive committee recommended significantly more money on the HR fixes. Beyond please, there were four executive sessions and they were, as we say, robust conversations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Director Harris. Yes, they're really great conversations and I appreciate you highlighting um, the uh, specific and explicit um, inclusion of dyslexia as well as um, when we think about uh, our next year, next year, we also included digital components to, to address address potential remote or virtual learning. So I will now move to Director Hersey for any comments or questions. None for me at this time. I'm excited about the direction. Thank you, Director Hersey. Director Mack. Yes, thank you. I, uh, in reviewing the documents, I'm just a little confused and maybe it's a matter of the headings, titles of the goals, um, or that they're not numbered. And so maybe it's a kind of more of an administrative management of the documents here. Um, as I look at them, the first page talks about third grade reading only. And so I'm, I'm just kind of confused. So there's uh, third grade reading on page five and it talks about the third grade reading goal um, but I don't see um, the other goals called out in that in introduction and they're so I'm having a hard time understanding so goal I'm just having a hard time it, it looks like there's I'm happy to help Three different see. goals here, but I'm yep. I, I'm I'm not tracking how they're organized. Understood. So if you go to the first thing you're looking at, it says intro to soup eval third goal reading, third grade reading. Scroll down a little bit further, and the next section says superintendent eval goals, effective leadership and management, and then has a similar introduction um, page with um, similar narrative there. Um, and so all those are captured in that second that second. Um, so. Down. So maybe it would be helpful to the narrative for clarity. I don't know if it's in the bar or the first page to say that just simply there are three uh, superintendent goals um, and they are high level, these three okay. or something. Because I'm just reading the documents. It's actually it's very hard to track that. So having a summary statement at the beginning of this document okay. of the what the what the goals are would be helpful to me uh, is is Aaron or Sherry on this call yes they are so I think we can um, capture those notes yeah I mean I this is super tense you know I think it's in the narrative so I'm just asking do you want specific headings or it is in the narrative of the bar in the second paragraph 
on our third paragraph under background information. Denise, um, you know, just to pretend you know, I think might what be helpful is, is, is as opposed to starting with introduction to 2020 soup eval goals, third grade reading, almost a quick um, page that just almost describes what you're about to read, which is the, it, it almost would look similar to the, the tabs page from your 2019 eval where you share um, those kind of goals broken out. So just almost just like an uh, a little table of contents that says what you're about to read and then highlighting those goals. Yeah, I think I agree with that as, as, a, as a, an intro page that says the superintendent's evaluation includes these three goals and then they're found on these pages um, uh, instead of just going into the different sections because it's harder to track. Having that summary as part of the packet would be very helpful as a first page. Thank you. Thank you. Director Rankin. Uh, sorry, I was not prepared for that to be me next, obviously. Um, uh, no, I don't have any questions. I just I want to uh, thank the exec committee. Their very intentional work around creating some uh, meaningful and direct um, ways to evaluate um, that are specific as opposed to sort of, you know, big goals that really have to do with the job of the superintendent. So I just really appreciate the work that you all have done. Thank you, Director Rivetta Smith. No questions. Thank you. I, I was in the executive meeting that this was discussed, and I, I saw the thorough job you guys did, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Director Bear Smith. Okay, uh, I also spoke. At, if Director Hampson, you want to say anything before we move on, and you, you have passed. Uh, no, I, you know, I guess I would just, um, I, when you are head down and doing this, this work uh, in particular, it's easy to kind of um stay get be feel in the weeds and and um so um i would just ask as we before we move to action uh that that every board director gives it a good solid look and is feels comfortable with it uh because you know we we had a lot of discussion this year about maybe things we should have thought of last year and so um you know hindsight's always 2020 but um uh, let's give this another good good read and, and make sure that everyone feels good about it for next year, I know things are, are changing in real time, and and one of the things that I think is really critical is that this is able to be flexible enough to, for uh, good evaluation, um, regardless of what things look like next year. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you everybody for the great discussion. We'll now move to introduction item number two, amending board policy number six two two two, selection of contractors for small construction projects. This came to the Audit and Finance Committee on May 18th for approval. Chief Financial Officer Jolyn Berge, I believe you will be briefing us. Good afternoon. This board action report makes edits to board policy 6222, selection of contractors for small construction projects in order to align with new limits in state law. The state legislature made changes to the small works roster limits. This proposed change would increase the amount allowed under our current policy from $200,000 to the new legal limit of $350,000. That would conclude my remarks. New Chief Berge, I'm gonna uh, start off with our Audit Finance Committee Chairperson Hampson and then work through the list. So Director Hampson, to you. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything particular to add. I'm, uh, anytime we can get things updated and consistent with state law I think it's it's important uh, otherwise I don't I don't have anything to add thank you okay thank you next up is director Harris uh, this is a question for chief Berge how do we continue to elevate and enhance our request that we have a robust outreach to women and minority business-owned enterprises so we continue to be members of the city's Tabor, um, I think um, 100 group. So we, we continue to do that. We continue also anytime that we hear or get feedback or someone just emails us and says, hey, I'm a woman or minority owned business. I'd like to be notified the next time you do any sort of X type of procurement. We keep them on a list. And then we're looking for other ways, frankly, to continue that outreach and to enhance um, who we can notify for certain bodies of work. 
Thank you. Thank you, Director Harris. Next up is Director Hersey. No questions for me at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Director Mack. Um, I'm curious to know whether or not this policy may again be impacted by the conversations of the student and community workforce agreement and anything that may come out of that. Is it possible this might get opened up again after that process? If Chief Podesta is here, I think he could probably answer that too. I don't, and obviously Chief Berge as well, but. Not to my knowledge, um, I, Fred. I, I would agree um, the student and community workforce agreement projects are all have a threshold of a contract threshold that will be in the millions. So it, it doesn't really um, apply to these uh, small projects. Thank you. Director Mack, any thanks more questions? For the nope, thanks for the clarification. Thank you, Director Rankin. I do not have any questions at this time. Thank you, Director Devetta Smith. No questions for me, thank you. Thank you, and I have no questions, but thank you for the work on this, uh, Chief Berge. Thank Enjoy. you to my staff, thank you. Of course. We'll now move to intro item number three, revised board policy number 6901, capital levy planning and adopting board policy number 6900, facilities planning. I can already tell Director Max, so excited to be here. Uh, this came to the operations committee on March 24th for approval. Mr. Podesta, I believe you'll be briefing us and then I will start with Director Max, operations chair. Um, what this action does, while, while we are in fact creating a new policy, What's actually happening is um, we're splitting an existing policy into two. The uh, uh, previous or uh, board policy 6901, really, which was titled capital levy planning, but that's where all our policies about facility, long range facility planning resided in there. And that really created um, practical constraint that the policy was really about planning a single levy. It did not really give the space to do uh, comprehensive long range planning independent of a particular um, levy action and frankly that particular funding source. Um, so the policies have been split um, to create a new 6900 that is just about facility planning independent um, of levy planning, which allows us to have a longer planning horizon, allows us to you know, consider other funding sources beyond levies, and um, you know, they're really two different subjects, and so they're now two different policies. They um, also, in drafting the the two, um, we were able to more explicitly center um, the policies on the district's values, and that um, to add language to make sure that when this planning does occur, this, these are really just policies of about planning, they're not plans themselves, um, that uh, policy 0030 is taken into account and that for um, the, uh, capital prioritization and for long range um, uh, facility planning that all equity issues are built into um, the processes. And the operations committee meant about this several times because there was a lot of detailed work to be done to put the right language in the right places um, but um, other than centering our values, there, there is an enormous amount of change here. It's just really organizing uh, actions that we really took. And I um, want to thank uh, the committee and uh, Director Mack for kind of their staying power of, of going through this um, issue with a fine tooth comb. And I think we're much, much better positioned with these two separate policies than we were before. And that's uh, all the comments I have. I think in any questions you might have. Thank you, Chief Podesta. I'll uh, turn it over to Director Mack as our Operations Committee Chair uh, to share more background for directors. Uh, well, as you know, uh, President DeWolf and uh, Director Harris, but this work has been ongoing for the past couple of years um, to uh, update uh, 6901 and have an overarching uh, facilities planning policy to disentangle the two and um, be more um, thoughtful around our planning processes. Um, so I'm super excited to finally get this to the full board. We've had conversations upon conversations upon conversations 
Um, and my my question to Mr. Podesta, just to you know, in reviewing it, I'd have to go look at my notes. I want to I want to check in to be sure that they're from the last operations committee meeting. Are there any changes that were made by staff from the documents that we walked away from that meeting with and the agreements that we made around language are is this there haven't been any additional changes made since that time or can you, I just want to make sure that there's not like something in there that I didn't catch that got changed in the interim. No, there to my knowledge there have been no changes since our um the last operations meeting. The last operations meeting where this was discussed. Okay, great. Um and then I just I do want to elevate um a couple things that are uh, I think helpful to our processes. One is elevating um, in policy uh, the educational specs and clarity around those um, and how they uh, how they interact with our planning processes and our buildings. Um, and also the I'm trying to figure out where the language is, but the um, in the levy policy, the technology planning. Um, Mr. Podesta, can you help me here for a second? We we had robust conversations around yes. technology, and I'm trying to find the language here that we landed so the, on. Landed on a statement in the levy policy since um, levies fund a lot of our technology investment. And I believe the direction um, that the board is headed to is to at some point develop a companion perhaps 6902 that is long-range technology planning just just like we've decoupled facility planning from levy planning um 6901 has a re reference to technology saying that it needs to be included in the levy planning because that's how we fund a lot of technology but that long-range technology planning also needs to be done separately from levy planning um, as, you know, independent from its funding source and that's future work to be taken up by the board. Yes, thank you. And I think that the, 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 the way that it ended up in the levy planning, pol in this levy planning policy 1601, uh, it continues to acknowledge that investments will be made to maintain and improve technology operations, equipment and services, including student learning and supports, district systems and data, and technology infrastructure and security. Um, and it also calls out technology needs that our, our capital levies will cover those things. And so when we go through the process of approving those levies, those specific plans that are identified in that levy for technology is one of the places of oversight of the board of deciding what, you know, how much, what are we doing, that sort of thing but that the additional support that we need to provide our oversight still is to have a bit more of a robust um, technology planning process that engages um, board approval. Um, so not just within the levy, but kind of a, the, the longer range. And that uh, my understanding is that staff is supportive of, of that, of developing that policy. And so that's, that's something that's kind of next on the on the plate. So thank you for highlighting that. Um, and I just appreciate all of the you know long, hard, intense conversations and the work that's gone on with this. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Director Mack. Uh, next, Director Hampton. Hi. Yeah. Um, I I believe we do have a technology master plan that's in that's being drafted. Um, but I actually had a question. Uh, I'm trying to get a handle on the extent to which any of this um, should be in a procedure, whether it's board or superintendent procedure, um, primarily on uh, 6901, the capital levy planning. Is that 
I assume that's something that was discussed, and so I'm just trying to get a sense of, of how that discussion results. Some of it seems to get really specific. Um, and then it says staff, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't say superintendent will direct staff or will develop procedure for, uh, it gets, gets into staff. So it feels a little. Um, Can you clarify which specific language you're talking well, about here? Um, so we, we're talking about the, the general board uh, principles, right, for planning, guideline, guiding principles, um, and then it uh, it gets into kind of some slightly less specific topics. Uh, I'm, again, I'm on six nine zero one. The priorities um, for the selection. Um, developing a plan and then articulating um, some some pretty specific items. Like I said, I'm just wondering the, the rationale for having something in uh, procedure is that it's much easier to change than than policy, and so I'm just right. wondering so what the yeah. consideration I was for having pieces that, that would need to be a little bit more flexible than therefore in procedure. So actually the, I think that the, the pieces that you're referring to um, in 6901 are, are pieces that were, have been in our policy um, and that there isn't a, there isn't an accompanying procedure that was written. So the determination that by go, when we're doing the capital levying planning that we need to set the prioritization that the board's responsible for setting those high level principles. Um, exactly how that, that happens and what metrics are used, et cetera, is not defined in the policy, but the overarching like statement that these are things that we will do in order to guide the selection of projects um, was in our existing policy. So it's it's actually not a change. It's it, uh, to our no uh, steps for a board, and that those procedural steps actually just the the additional steps. There there isn't a super, there's not a superintendent procedure that goes along with it. Director Hampson, are you comfortable? Can I move forward? Do you have more questions? Well, I wanted to hear from uh, staff as well um, about the. I. I think, to be honest, um, Director Mack has described it well that the, the bulk of this work was um, deciding what needed to come out of the policy to create um, to create a standalone facility master planning um, process. And so, what remains has been there and has worked. Um, it's not to say that your you know your question isn't a valid one, and it and um, maybe with as we plan the next levy, um, we'll see if. There's too much specificity in this policy, but I don't think staff had an issue because um, this is what we've worked with for quite a while. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say because it being there before, we have some very lengthy policies that would could arguably be divided up into policy and procedure, not because of for you know control issues, but because certain things are need to have more flexibility year to year than others, and so. Um, uh, that's all I was I was trying to get at. Yeah. No, it, it, was that conversation had, and you know, if so, the outcome. Yeah. Any more questions, Director Hampson? No. Okay, Director Harris. First of all, big props to my colleague Eden Mack, Chair of Operations. She has guided and shepherded this standing committee. I have heard from several members of this standing committee that they're very excited and they find it robust. Big props as well to Chief Podesta and to Superintendent Juneau for making this happen. Um, also big props to the board for the guiding principles on the last levy. And I would suggest if we do need procedures, they need to be board procedures because this is a board enacted committee. 
Thanks very much. I'm thrilled about this. This is a long range, 5, 10, 15 years that we've been waiting for as yep. opposed to reactive. If Director Hersey. We've discussed this extensively in ops, and I'm just excited to see that it is finally here. So I am good. No questions or comments. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Director Hersey. I do trust that. All right, next is Director Rankin. I uh, just want to echo the the support for having the technolo technology planning and levy planning be separate, and also that within that, we've got um, classroom technology needs versus sort of infrastructure technology needs. So I'm just really glad that we're uh, examining those things separately as they need to be and making sure that uh, the needs of our teachers and our buildings are driving our spending as opposed to um, spending, uh, spending on something and then figuring out what to do with it. So just appreciate the work going into all of this. Thank you. Director Rivera Smith. Um, yeah, no, big Thanks to Director Mack for the tireless work on this has been uh, discussed thoroughly and I'm so happy to see it happen. So no questions or comments. Awesome. Thank you, Director Vetter Smith. And Director Mack, I just tell folks, thank you for your work on this uh, and I've appreciated your support. Um, one example I just want to highlight for directors is the really exciting and transformative and um, just really pride centric uh, resolution we just passed for LGBTQIA plus students. Um, this is one of the policies that is impacted and we collaborate, I collaborate with Director Mack to include language in these policies so that future construction uh, incorporates at least one multi-stall gender neutral restroom uh, in facilities. So I appreciate the work on this, Director Mack, and also Ronald Boy for your help there. Uh, and I don't have any other questions at this time. So we can move on to item number four, which is BEX 4 Resolution 2019-20-20. Final acceptance of contract P5034 with Lighting Construction Inc. for the Wilson Pacific Elementary and Middle Schools, Cascadia Elementary, Robert Eagle Staff Middle, and Licton Springs K8 project. This came to the Operations Committee on March 2nd for approval. Mr. Badesta, I believe you'll be briefing us, and then I'll hand it over to Director Mack again. Yes, um, this is you know, our favorite milestones on these capital construction board actions is the final acceptance of a completed project. Um, this caps off uh, the replacement of the Wilson Pacific buildings um, with uh, Robert Eagle's staff, um, Licton Springs and Cascadia Elementary. The projects were completed a couple of years ago. The buildings have been occupied um, since the fall of 2017. Um, all punch list items and project closeout work is complete and um, this will allow the board to put forward a resolution to uh, accept our completed and occupied buildings. Thank you, Chief Podesta. Now over to Director Mack, our Operations Committee Chair. Um, I love celebrating final acceptance um, and just super excited for this to be in front of us. Thank you. I'll just open it up to all directors if you have questions or comments, concerns about this final acceptance. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item number five. This is uh, extending the suspension of provisions of board policy number 2420, high school grade and credit marking through August 2020. Dr. Diane DeBacker, I believe you'll be briefing us. Yes, thank you, President DeWolf. This board action port asked you to extend the suspension of portions of board policy number 2420, our high school grade and credit marking policy through August of this year. Changing the available grade options for the courses during summer school would make the options A or incomplete, and that would be consistent with what we're doing now during the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. This bar represents the extension given that we believe we need to continue to take steps to minimize harm by the COVID pandemic, and especially and particularly for those students who are furthest from educational justice. As we've noted in the bar, there are differences between our second semester work and our summer offerings for high school course and credits. For example, our summer offerings are much more narrow in that we have APEX offerings, skilled cent skills center, internships, world language opportunities, and some of our high school offer school-specific credit-bearing courses. But even given that, we 
believe that we um, we do need to extend this grading policy through the summer because the same situations occur and that students may not have as many opportunities to be successful or as successful with a regular grading policy during this time. Um, we were unable to bring this to through committee um, and do as much engagement as we would have liked to have done in part because we only received guidance from OSPI in their April guidance as to that the um, grading policy should extend through the summer. So that is why we are bringing it to you now and it has not gone through the um, CNI committee in the normal manner and Director Rankin can speak to that if so desired. With that, I uh, stand for questions. Thank you, Dr. Tabacker. I appreciate that uh, uh, background and I'll uh, just start with Director Rankin as the uh, committee chairperson of the um, curriculum and policy and instru curriculum and instruction policy committee. Thank you, um, President DeWolf and Dr. DeBacker. Yeah, so this um, because of timing of when recommendations came from OSPI and then when we need to uh, uh, have grading and policy in place for the summer before classes start. Uh, that there wasn't enough there there weren't enough meeting dates to do. A, preview for the board or for the committee, a vote through the committee intro and then action. And so uh, what what uh, we decided was that um, uh, since it wasn't, a, since it was the an extension of the policy that we already went over in great detail, um, and it was just an extension of the timing that uh, the decision that I made to to help us make up some of the time in the scheduling was that it was more important to have the public be noticed over two regular board meetings, intro today and action at the next time. Uh, that took priority over cycling it through committee as usual and then having um, the meeting be intro and act or the item be intro and action at the same regular board meeting. So that was the decision making there. And we did have it. Uh, update about it in committee yesterday noticing and whatnot to have the full um, the full process so but we were all comfortable with that and um, and yes what the, the realization was that uh, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to hold students to the traditional grading policy when the situation that is in place that necessitated this semester's policy um, hasn't hasn't changed. They're still facing the same um, the same challenges uh, over the summer that that we were facing uh, this semester. So um, that is, uh, I think, about it. Thank you, Director Rankin. Appreciate the background. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll move to uh, to directors quickly. Uh, starting with Director. Rankin. Maybe muted, Director Hampson. Oh, no, sorry, you cut out. I couldn't hear what you said. Uh, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Director Harris. No comments or questions. Thank you. Thanks, Director Harris. Director Hersey. No questions, but still want to just make sure that it's on all of our radars that I would like to see um, a lessons learned work session from specifically our grading policy to see how it impacts, especially our students further away from educational justice uh, after we get past August. So uh, no questions, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Mack. Um, I, I have a little bit of a question and, and I think maybe more of a comment around the timing of when OSPI put out the recommendations and when we adopted our grading policy um, and that this we wouldn't need to be um, taking this action now if we had actually been thorough in that process and waited uh, for the OSPI um, uh, recommendations to come out. And I just want to uh, advocate strongly for us to be uh, mindful of those, those um, things going forward around various um, recommendations that are going to come out of OSPI around reopening schools and and other um, other things where uh, it, it's it's helpful if we don't get too far ahead of ourselves and I just want to make sure that we 
are um, setting up our timelines and building an appropriate community engagement going forward um, so we don't have to backtrack and um, do additional things like another policy. Thank you. Thanks, Director Smith. Director Devetta Smith. Thank you, no questions. Thank you. And um, my only question, just to confirm, Dr. DeBacker or Liza, is that there's no substantive changes, correct? That is. I mean, no, no, no content. It's just about the extension. Correct. It's just about the extension. Okay. Thank you. I thank you. I have no other questions on that. Uh, and really grateful for the work on this and, and happy about the process. Um, so that moves us into, I have a question for for directors, we have um, Director Hampson will be sharing an announcement of completed internal audits, uh, and then we can still can we can still have our director board comments um, if you'd like. My suggestion, given we're over time, is to move into the executive session. But um, I will let Director Hampson share her her uh, internal audit uh, work, and then I'll, I'll ask directors what their feelings are about um, either for going board comments or not. Director Hampson. Director Hampson, and that's you for completing. Yes, internal. sorry, I'm trying to pull up the document. I had it. Um, okay, Director uh, President DeWolf, this is Director Mack, and uh, as she's prepping that, I would like to suggest that, um, uh, in the if if people have burning comments uh, tonight, um, then I appreciate that. But I I think that uh, given time and. Um, so forth that I, I'd be happy to forego board comments tonight. Thank you. I'm, I'm in concurrence with you. So, Director Hampson, do you have those documents ready for to share? Not yet. I'm still okay. looking for it. If Ellie can remind me specifically what it's called. So, Ellie, while you're helping that, if other directors um, concur with Eden uh, and foregoing board comments so we can move to executive session, um, let me know your thoughts. Oh, I found it. So, hold on. Uh, Announcement. I got it. Okay. Am I still on? You are. Okay. Uh, uh, here, uh, here we go. Uh, board procedure 6550BP internal audit requires an announcement of completed internal audits. As the Audit and Finance Committee Chair, I am announcing that at the June 2nd quarterly Audit and Finance Committee meeting, the Office of Internal Audit presented an internal audit report on stipends. All findings and recommendations are discussed at a public audit and finance committee meeting and the completed reports are available online at the office of internal audits public webpage. if you'd like to find that click on departments and services under the directory tab and then click on internal audit thank you director DeWolf. director harris uh Two comments, and then I will cede my director comments time. One, huge congratulations to our graduates and our risers. And so very sad that we can't have in-person graduation. And two, this evening at 6.30, we have student comments via Zoom. And we invite them all to come aboard for reopening community engagement student voice. Thank you. Thank you. Do other directors have any comments they'd like to share now? Any burning comments? I do. Director Rankin. Um, this Friday, uh, I had asked about the possibility of a district-wide strike, and legally I don't think that we can do that, but I just wanted to state um, that I know I and I think several other board directors too will be in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter um, Seattle King County chapter with a call for a silent march and strike and day of action. Um, and and then I also just want to add my voice to those asking that um, I know the phrase defund the police it can be can sound scary, but what that actually means is a reconsideration of our values and our budgets, and that. Um, that we've come to a situation in our schools and in our society where uh, discipline and punishment is is the only tool that we have at our disposal instead of compassion and care and support and trauma-informed, anti-bias, anti-racist 
um, uh, teaching and educating. So I'm just going to say, just add to that, that what we we really need is um, early learning support, child care support, support for mental health, family support, and housing for our families. Um, and that those are all things that uh, the city could help us out a lot with that doesn't impact the way that the budgeting works for schools from the state and would have a huge impact on the health and safety of our kids and of our city and um, Black Lives Matter and I'm done. Thank you. Any other directors? Uh, this is Director Hampson. Uh, I will just briefly say what I what I said in my video in case it doesn't get doesn't go anywhere <laughs> my, uh, the, in my congratulatory video to uh, seniors um, at the at my my district uh, high school um, that this graduating class has earned the their high school diploma uh, like no class before them and that while uh, this may seem like the defining moment of their life that the um, defining moments truly defining moments of their lives are yet to come that um, they should be brave for their ancestors and as um, is the uh, urging of the, um, uh, the the last urging of the african-american male uh, advisory council um, when they revisited their their mission and vision um, that their statement to um, their black students uh, is that you are the architect of your own dreams. And so congratulations to all of you. Um, we live in very challenging times, but um, uh, you you are our future leaders and we look forward to seeing uh, what change you bring. Thank you. Thanks, Director Hampson. Any other question, uh, comments from directors before we move to executive session? Okay. Hearing none, this is similar to our executive session at the top of the agenda. Please switch over to the other team's meeting uh, link that you should have um, in the team's app or software. So the board is now immediately recessing the regular board meeting into executive, executive session to discuss with legal counsel representing the agency litigation or potential litigation to which the agency, the governing body, or a member acting in an official capacity is or is likely to become a party when public knowledge regarding the discussion is likely to result in an adverse legal or financial consequence to the agency per RCW 42.30.1101I with a session scheduled for 30 minutes with an anticipated end time of 4.14. Directors will be leaving this remote meeting now for the duration of the executive session and I will return to this meeting to make announcements should be run past our scheduled end time and also to adjourn the regular board meeting at the conclusion of the executive session. Directors, you have been provided separate call-in and Teams meeting information for this executive session. Please now leave this Teams meeting and join me in that separate remote meeting with the executive session. Thank you all for your patience, and I will see you in the executive session.
Um, Martina, does 